Back again. <laughs> Yeah, with CJ, the uh, the things that stood out from the skill standpoint is, as we all saw him, right, he can put the ball anywhere he needs to uh, in a very accurate manner. Uh, he did a very good job of just his demeanor. I think at that quarterback position, when you have a very calm demeanor and your teammates see that, right, it, it's a confidence, right? It's a calm confidence that kind of exudes throughout the entire locker room, and that's what CJ has, and I think those are the skills that allowed him Right, to be very successful as a rookie and have one of the best uh, rookie seasons for a quarterback in our league's history. So very excited about what T.J. did this year, but I'm also even more excited about the things that he can improve on and where he can get better, continuing to lead our team this next year. Definitely looking for a huge jump in his growth from year one to year two. Well, for me, every season you start over, right? Last year was last year. Uh, it was a good run for us. Not didn't end the way we wanted it to end, but it was a good run for the 2023 Texans. Now, for me, it's a clean slate. We start over 2024. Now, who are we going to be, right? And you know, we have a lot of great matchups versus a lot of uh, great teams this year. And I'm excited to first off build our team again the proper way of guys who are just looking to compete, guys who have that relentless mindset, guys who want to go out, play for each other, guys who want to hunt, guys who want to play with relentless effort and finish. Like, that's what I'm looking to build as we start this offseason. Yeah, our division is, is definitely really good. You think about the young quarterbacks in our division. Uh, with the Colts, the Jags, right, the Titans, and us, we all have really young quarterbacks who all have bright futures. And so really four really good teams in our division is going to be a battle each and every week that we play each other. But I'm excited about it, right? You want to play against really the top, top, top competition to see where you stack up, right? And I'm excited to see our team, right, develop and grow throughout the year and see where we end up. Yeah, very pleased with Devin. I remember sitting in a free agent visit with Devin and just, man, his personality, his demeanor, it was a guy I knew I wanted to work with right away. Right, Devin is made of the right stuff. He's a hard worker. He's a leader. He shows up every day in practice with a great attitude, and the guys around him feed off of that. Right, so Devin was a great guy. We'll see what happens in free agency, but we'd, we'd love to have Devin back just because of what he brought to our team. He was, uh, he was definitely a bright spot for us in the running back room. Yeah. You know, when we talk about his growth, I think it starts with the coaches that you surround him with. So we surrounded him with some young coaches, young, talented coaches, and uh, Bobby Sloick, Gerard Johnson, also veteran coaches, and Bill Lazor and Shane Day, uh, who's no longer with us. But we just surrounded him with the right guys in the coaching position, but also in his room, right, having Case Keenum there, a veteran quarterback who's done it at a high level for a long time. So making sure that we have that balance around CJ. So if there's any questions, any things that he may ask or things that he can lean on guys who've been there, done that, seen that before, right? There was not a guy around him that he couldn't ask, he couldn't rely on, who can give him the answers and can share with them his their experiences of how they've seen other quarterbacks right succeed in this league. I thought Bobby did a really great job being a first-year coordinator. Everybody is kind of hesitant when you have a first-year coordinator, and nobody knows truly what to expect. But uh, for me, knowing Bobby and knowing how detailed he is in his preparation, right, how prepared he is, how he gets his coaches prepared, the way he teaches, like it, it showed up on the film, and I'm 
I'm happy for Bobby that he was able to garner the success that he truly deserves, right? And Bobby's success doesn't happen without the players. So I never lose sight of this game is about the players, and it will always be about the players. As coaches, we're just here to assist the players, right, and support them in any way we can. But uh, Bobby doesn't have that success without getting the right players, and the players performing at a high level. Well, it started right here at the combine, right, when you were evaluating young players. You see CJ come into our room in the formal interviews and just see, you know, he had that calmness about him, right, in the room. And you can tell, for me, I can tell instantly, like, if a guy, you know, has what it takes. And I, I saw that in CJ when he first sat down and he began to speak to us about his background, right, and his college experience. And then you see, right, his teammates and how they spoke about CJ. I remember being here last year and every Ohio State a teammate that sat in our room, they spoke highly of CJ and the type of leader he was and what he meant to them and the things that he did to those guys to help them. So it's uh, you can't hide, right? Your true character always will will show, and it showed that CJ was a, a really great guy, raised the right way, and he was the same guy throughout the entire year. He didn't change, right? And that's uh, true testament to his upbringing, his family, his parents, and the way they raised him. Yeah, with the receiver position, we're looking for guys who are separators, right? Who can separate, who can find a way to get open, right? And if you have that one redeeming quality that you can separate, right? That's what we're looking for, especially that shows up on third down, right? How do you win third down? How do you stay on the field as an offense, right, and continue to produce uh, and move the ball down the field? It's about third down, right, and being able to convert. And the way you convert is guys who are savvy enough to find a way to always get open. Yeah, Shane did a really nice job. Uh, I remember going against him our second game. He did a really nice job. Even you, know, you see a coach who's able to adapt, even though he lost his starting quarterback and Anthony Richardson. Right? I mean, backup comes in and Minshew does a really great job, and he was able to sustain that throughout the entire year. So I really, I think that speaks highly to the coaching and the coaching staff and the guys you have around him. So, I mean, credit to Shane, did a really good job without having his uh, starting quarterback, and we were able to, you know, come here to Indy and have a you know, a, a matchup there to make the playoffs. So it's a uh, really credit to him. I think always thought highly of Shane's back in, uh, back in, uh, in Philly, right? Going against him as a play caller. He's always done a really great job of, of keeping you off balance, right? And really attacking like what you give him. He tries to take advantage of what you give him and not always going for the big play, but he's very smart in how he approaches the game planning. Coach, are you, uh, coach, you and, uh, you and Nick Well, bringing back Bobby and, and Gerard, I think it helps with the continuity of our offense, right? With a young quarterback, young players around them, you want to continue to build on what those guys did this year. So I'm, I'm happy to not go into a, a new season here and we have to worry about right installing a new offense, right? Or learning, learning new terminology. So now we can hit the ground running. We can really build off of what we did, look at through our self-scout, the things that we did well, things that CJ did well, and how can we continue to put him in those positions to succeed. Coach, on last, coach, on last year, you and, uh, on last year, you and Nick really you know, hit the lottery when it came to drafting CJ and Will. How do you all follow that up this year? <laughs> wow. That was, uh, that was an exciting draft last year to be able to get right, two of the top players in, this, in the draft class last year to get CJ and Will and two anchors. Uh, for our team, for our locker room, that was that was very important for us to get both guys. How do we follow that up this year? We continue to add guys who fit the Texans culture, and that's guys who are made of the right mindset, guys who have that relentless mindset, guys who are true competitors, guys who love football, guys who who love pushing their teammates to be their best, guys who want to be the best at what they do, right? We add those type of players to our locker room, 
that's how we follow up a uh, great draft last year. Right. When you talk about free agents, when you have that firsthand look of the guys who you've spent day after day with, you know them. You know their strengths. You know their weaknesses. Right. You know everything about the player. You know how they are when things get hot and heavy. Like, how do they handle it? So I think there is an advantage to, man, I know exactly who this guy is. I know exactly how he will respond as opposed to reaching for someone you may on another team that you may not have much info about. Uh, so it, it, there's a lot that goes into it. It's like while we're here at the Combine, we're trying to gather as much information on these players and their backgrounds as much as we can to identify who they are as a person, right? And in the free agency process, it kind of gets sped up, and sometimes you miss out on truly figuring out, man, who is this person that we're bringing into our building? So for me, it's always person over player, right? And bringing the right person in is uh, is of high importance to me. Right. Yeah, Dalton really did a really nice job for us in the passing game. Uh, when those two-minute drives where we were able to win a few games, Dalton really showed up in a situational football third down. He showed up making big catches for us. So uh, we'll see what happens with Dalton in free agency, but I'm very, very proud of what he did for us last year. No, sky's the limit for Christian. Christian is one of the, the fastest linebackers that I've had a chance to work with. Very explosive, instinctive player. So I'm excited. I see last year as Christian's rookie year. That was his first year, and I'm excited to see him build off of what he did last year. Yeah, it is. It's, it's challenging to keep up with the coaches, but I think with me and how do you evaluate those coaches, you really rely on is that you rely on those people that they've been with, right? Coaches that they've been around and guys they have experience with, and you just want to learn how they are as workers, like right? how dedicated are those guys to perfecting their craft, right? Are they guys who have no ego? and they're willing to do whatever it takes to just help the team. And I think that's how you truly define, right, good young assistant coaches. Are they, I tell coaches all the time, are you the best at what you do? Or are you looking to pursue something else, right, inside of doing the best job that you have, right? Whether you're, if you're coaching the tight ends, are you the best tight end coach? Are you a QC? Are you the best at breaking down information or getting the information to the coaches just, be faithful over a few things, and you'll get blessed with more. I think it comes a lot. Uh, also, with coaching, it comes to right, with our our scouting department, who's on the road, they go to colleges and they see coaches, they're at practices, so they see these coaches actually in action working with the young players, and that's where I gain a lot of insight from our scouts, our college scouts who are on the road to see, man, how was this guy in his drills, right? And that's, that speaks highly to me, and I gain a lot of information from our college scouts. All right, we're going to right. do the last one for Gio. And then we're hey, what's up, buddy? Yeah, for for me with the with the success we've had, and I'm you know I'm excited to see more former players step into coaching, right, and become head coaches because uh, there are a lot of talented players, former players who've done it at a high level, guys who understand the game, guys who can connect and relate with players, and guys who can lead. 
So I would, I would love to see even more former players step up and become head coaches. And I think you saw that, you know, in this hiring cycle uh, with Antonio Pierce, with Jared Mayo, like most guys are getting those opportunities, right? And I'm excited to see those guys be successful as well. Thank you guys. All right. Thank you guys. All right.